Hey guys, welcome back to Honeycomb. My name is K.O. Kosha and today we're gonna be dealing with vermouth and trying to figure out how to use the bottle. But before we get into it, do subscribe and do follow along on Instagram. I'm at K.O. Kosha on Instagram. Follow at Daily Drink Mag on Instagram and at Honeycomb Manila. Your follows and subscribes go a long way to, uh, for us. And uh, click the thumbs up button if you do enjoy this video and if you have any questions, be glad to answer them in the comments below. All right, with that out of the way, let's dive into our topic today, which is batching cocktails or how to make a whole bottle of cocktails that you can put in your fridge or your freezer that you can use on an ongoing basis for the next month or so. And the reason why I wanted to discuss this was because I opened up this bottle of vermouth. This is a La Quintinier Vermouth Royale Vermouth Blanc uh, or white vermouth. Now, most people know vermouth as sweet vermouth or dry vermouth. What really opened up my eyes to blank vermouth was going to Atlas in Singapore and seeing how, you know, a very world famous world class bar was using blanc vermouth in their cocktails um, and oftentimes as a replacement for dry vermouth. And the thing I like about it is that it's a little bit sweeter than dry vermouth and it is a little bit more floral than dry vermouth. However, the thing you need to understand when you're dealing with a vermouth is that it is a wine. It's what we it's what we call a fortified wine. So fortified wines are wines with things added to them. In this case, a bittering agent is used, or there must be some sort of wormwood for uh, for European vermouths. This in this case, this is a vermouth from France, so it definitely has some sort of uh, wormwood in here, but they also put other things in there. Most producers have secrets to how long they age it, what goes into it, and we only really get to see the final product. But from my experience, this La Quintinier Vermouth Royale is a very approachable and usable, well-priced Vermouth Blanc. Uh, and that's why I purchase it. It's great for mixing up with other drinks or even tasting on its own. Now, it's not unusual that you'll go to a bar or someone's house and order uh, a drink like a Manhattan that involves vermouth, and they'll pull out a crusty bottle of vermouth that's been sitting on their shelves for, gosh, a year, two years sometimes, a few months. And the truth is, once a bottle of vermouth is open, it's got to go in the fridge, because it is a wine. And it does last a little bit longer than a wine, but really, you shouldn't be using a vermouth that's been in the fridge for more than one month to maybe at max you know 100 days or three months now there is another way to preserve your cocktails or preserve anything really we do it with coffee as well which is that you can freeze it and that slows down the molecules inside of any material any food or beverage and allows it to store for much longer and you can actually do that with any cocktails that doesn't have juice content in it so if it's a spirit forward cocktail then you can put it in the freezer and that will allow it to to last a lot longer maybe you can even go six months although i don't think you want to do that the problem is if you put this in the freezer the abv is way too low alcohol by volume on this particular vermouth is only 16 percent um, versus you know, spirit forward alcohols, 40% alcohol by volume. So if I put this in the freezer, it wouldn't freeze. Uh, but if I put this in the freezer, it probably will because there is a significant amount of, uh, of water or there's a low alcohol by volume. So in order for us to store this in the freezer, what we need to do is we need to actually put it into a cocktail so that we can start storing it in the freezer for a long term. Once we batched it and put it into a cocktail, we can store it in the freezer for a couple of months, maybe even a half a year, and just dose it out, drink it whenever we want to. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take this, and in our first part, we are going to turn this into one batch of cocktails, use, use half the bottle for that, and then we'll do a part two where we take the rest of the, the vermouth and make another batch cocktail. You guys game? All right, so what we're gonna do today is a double adjusted uh, Manhattan. So a Manhattan is usually dry vermouth, rye whiskey, and Angostura bitters. And it uses the 212 format, which is the, I believe it's the zip code of Manhattan. So we're gonna do a double variation on that, which is first, we're going to replace our, our dry vermouth with a blanc vermouth. 
what is often known as a Bianco Manhattan. And then we're also gonna adjust the whiskey. Instead of being a rye, we're gonna be using a scotch. In this case, we're using Ballantine's Finest that we've modified as well. Now, usually a, a Scotch Manhattan is known as a Rob Roy. So I don't have a name for this, but this is basically a twice twice modified Rob Roy. Now, what you'll need, first, of course, you'll need your vermouth. This is the, uh, the black vermouth. Second, you need Valentine's Finest or any scotch will do. You can actually use a rye if you feel like it. But for our recipe today, we're using Valentine's Finest because it's very well priced. Uh, here in the Philippines, you can buy a bottle of this for 500 something pesos, um, depending where you buy it. And uh, we've actually done something special with it. And this is actually our Valentine's Finest. We have fat washed it in some bacon. And so we've modified it already to get that flavor in there. But in its heart, it's Valentine's. If you want to know more about fat washing, let me know in the comments and uh, or leave a thumbs up and we'll do an episode about fat, about fat washing at some point in the future. And finally, you need your Angostura bitters, which is uh, in the Philippines about 900 to 1,000 pesos a bottle. And we're going to be using a good amount of that. Now to mix your cocktail, you need a container. In this case, we're using this big mixing glass to mix all of this stuff in. And you'll see why in a minute, why we need this. And we're not just mixing it straight into the bottle. Now for our cocktail today, we're using about 900 ml of liquid, a little bit more. Uh, so we won't be able to use a traditional 750 ml bottle, but we do have these big one liter bottles from Gifford. And I always make sure that we store our bottles, we clean them and we sterilize them for such moments like this. And to get everything into there, we're gonna use a funnel. Now to make our batch recipe, we take a standard recipe and we multiply it up. So we have 600 ml of scotch and in a, nat in a normal Rob Roy or Manhattan, you would use 60 ml or two ounces to make your, your drink. Since we have 600 ml of scotch, we're gonna divide that by 60 and we end up with 10, which means that all of our, our ingredients, we're just gonna multiply by 10. Now using our 212 format, usually you'd be using uh, one part vermouth or 30 ml or one ounce and uh, so we'll multiply that by 10 end up with 300 ml finally we have our angostura bitters where you usually put two dashes and that's about 0.2 ml uh, from our experience we've been weighing it which means that we're going to put a total of 2 ml into our cocktail and we'll start with that because this is actually the hardest one to get prop uh, to do right so we're going to put the angostura bitters in the mixing glass first. Now we're using a scale, but if you don't have a scale, you can just count your dashes. Uh, but ideally you should use a scale, uh, scale for these. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So it's at 9.5 right now, and I'm just gonna bring it all the way up to 10 ml. And that's all the Angostura bitters for the entire drink. Now I'm gonna tear the scale and now we're gonna put in our scotch and I'm gonna put in the first 300 ml of whiskey. The reason why we put the bitters in first is so that we can use the scotch to rinse out all of the bitters, make sure it gets all in there. We'll take our mixing spoon and just give it a nice mix and pour that into our bottle. So we tear our scale again and put in the second 300 ml, bringing our total to 600 ml of scotch. I got a little bit more. I'm just going to put it up. 310 ml. <laughs> a little past 600, but you can just more or less be 600 ml. And we're going to pour that in and watch it mix up with our bitters. So first we did our bitters, then we did our scotch. Now it's time for our vermouth. And this black vermouth is gonna go in. Now for the black vermouth, again, we're gonna put in 300 ml of black vermouth. For our last ingredient, we're actually gonna put a little bit of water. Now, usually when you make a drink like this, you build it in the glass, and that means that 
you're diluting the drink as well. Now you could put this whole thing in the freezer, chill it already, and then uh, when you want to serve it, build it inside the glass. But I like to add 5% dilution already so it's not so difficult to build when that time comes and we're not melting too much ice. So we're just gonna add 45 ml of water into the cocktail just to dilute it just a bit since it's going to be inside the freezer. So that when we serve it up, we just need to pour it into a little bit of ice. All right, that's it. That is our bottled Manhattan slash Rob Roy using our, our fat wash Valentines, our sweet vermouth, and our Angostura bitters. So how do we serve this? Let's serve it up, show you what it looks like when you wanna drink it. All right, so your Manhattan has been batched. It's been stored in the freezer. Now, when you wanna serve it up, all you have to do is open it up again and dose into your glass. So I have a rocks glass that I put ice into. And when I dose in my drink, the drink is already pretty cold, but I can still give it a little stir. We're gonna take our jigger and we're gonna pour three times and that's gonna give us three ounces of Manhattan or around 90 ml. Give it a little build. Because we already put in a little bit of dilution, we don't wanna build it too much. The drink is already cold and uh, ready to drink. Cheers. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Now balancing out this drink is the fact that we've fat washed the Valentine Scotch. It took away a bit of the edge but it introduced a little bit of smokiness and a little bit of saltiness because the fat that we used was an American smoked bacon. A little bit salty, a little bit smoky, but complete without the need for a cocktail onion or an olive. Now, usually a cocktail like this will be about 90 to 100 ml in total, and that includes your, your 60 ml of whiskey, your 30 ml of uh, your vermouth, and you know just that minuscule um, dashes of bitters. So that means that this bottle where we made 900 ml of, or about 950 ml of cocktail, batch cocktail, will make about 10 servings. Now in terms of price, we spent about the same price, um, you know, volume adjusted. There's about 480 pesos worth of scotch, about 480 pesos worth of vermouth, and then just those few dashes of Angostura bitters. Um, I've actually done the math and uh, for this entire bottle, it costs about 960 pesos in total, 965 maybe. And that makes each serving about 96.5 pesos per drink. All right, so that's our batch Manhattan cocktail. Quick and easy, a great way to store your vermouth where, in a way that it won't go bad by increasing the ABV. Um, it's also a great thing to have around for parties if you don't wanna spend a lot of time making your drinks. Again, any spirit forward cocktail like this can be batched very efficiently and it's a great way to use your vermouths very efficiently. All right, do remember to subscribe, tell a friend about this, share it if you can, and follow along on Instagram. I'm at Kosh on Instagram, follow at Daily Drink Mag on Instagram, and follow at Honeycomb Manila for all the stuff that's going on here in Honeycomb, our co-working space. All right, I wish you guys good luck, I wish you guys good health, peace.